And now, presenting a show so big, so monumentally large, huge, giant, stupendous, and uh, other words that mean the opposite of small, that it could only be brought to you by the largest organ in the human body. Ski! What? Bill Nye the Science Guy. Bill Nye the Science Guy. Inertia is a property of matter. T minus seven seconds. Do you know the largest organ in your body? Well, it's not in your body. It's on your body. Your skin. Your skin protects you, regulates your body's temperature, and your skin keeps you in touch with the world. Oh, excuse me, excuse me. Your epidermis is showing. <laughs> it is. Your epidermis is your outer layer of skin. So let's say that this raincoat of science is like your skin. Our skin protects us from the sun. From the rain. From the weather. And from big buckets of water. Our skin keeps us warm like a jacket. See, it's toasty in here. Our skin cools us off. When we sweat, the water evaporates and cools us. Ah. Our skin gives us our sense of touch, lets us feel things. It's like we have thousands and thousands of tiny switches in our skin that send messages to our brain, see? Our skin lets us feel things as thin as a piece of paper or as thick and wide as the hood of a car. Our skin lets us feel some weird things, too. Our skin protects us, regulates our temperature, and gives us our sense of touch. Our skin is something. Hey, Nate. Hey, Bill. Long time no see. You still doing that show? Yeah. You still playing basketball? You ready to sweat? Hey, I sweat around four liters a day. Comes right out of my skin and keeps me cool. Oh, very cool. You want to play horse, as usual? Actually, I was kind of hoping we would do something a little different. <laughs> Three layers in the last your whole life. What do you know about basketball, right? You sweating yet? No, but that's probably because the blood vessels in my skin have dilated or gotten bigger, so I could lose more heat. He knows what dilated means. Science is very important to athletes. Maybe we should have played horse. Maybe not. Science! Burns and burn and burn! Ow! Ow! Ooh, burns! Burns! It's stinging! When you're down by the sea, be where the UV. Ow. You can't do the ocean if you ain't got the lotion. Ow! It stings and burn and burn! Ow! Did you know that? Your skin weighs twice as much as your brain. Your skin is thinnest on your eyelids. Now you know!
cool test you can do to see how your skin works to regulate your body temperature. Cool us off. First, you need two thermometers. You know, like the kind you use in your fish tank. They work great. And two gym socks. Like the kind you keep in your gym bag. We'll use these two socks to show us how sweat helps keep us cool. Sweat is what happens when sweat glands, special parts of our skin that squeeze water, sweat onto the outside of our skin. What? It's our skin's way of helping us control our body's temperature. So let's pretend these socks are our skin. Now, get one of them wet, very wet, like it was sweating really hard. Remember, the temperature of the water you use has to be the same temperature as the air around it. Now, touch the dry sock, then touch the wet sock. Which one feels cooler? So now we can check to see which sock is cooler. The dry sock is 64 degrees, the wet one is 60 degrees. That means that the wet sock is cooler, and that's because when the water evaporates off the skin, it carries the heat away with it. It cools it down. The hotter we are, the more we sweat, which makes us more cool. Okay, let's do it. I think you got it. I think that's good. Okay, I think you can stop now. I think you think we got it. <laughs> See, we're making me cold. That way I'll get goosebumps. Goosebumps happen when your skin pulls tight to keep you from losing heat. It's kind of like pulling up the zipper on a jacket. It, it's kind of like that. Did we get it? Is that it? No. Did we get it? I think we got uh, it. Didn't we get it? Nope. <laughs> Even though an elephant's skin is really thick, their skin's so sensitive that they can feel a fly land on their back. Those hairs on the trunk are almost like a whisper. They're very sensitive. They help them to feel. It feels like silk, and you can feel the scales and the skin. They look kind of like, just like spots of paint. The skin's so dry. Well, on the sides here, he feels like a pillow. Kind of feels like the elephant. When Enoch comes up to eat from you, why don't you go ahead and reach out and try to touch his skin and um, let me know what you think it feels like. It's smooth as silk. Ooh, smooth. Big and chubby. <laughs> the skin looks like kind of like a snake. The frog feels like silly petty. Big and chubby. <laughs> hey, Nate, what are you doing? I'm looking at my skin. It's fascinating. What are you doing, Bill? 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 Huh? Consider the following. Everyone in the world has brown skin. That's right. Some people have light brown skin, some people have dark brown skin, and some people have a brown somewhere in the middle. But everyone has brown skin. Now, the only difference between this brown paint and this clear water are little particles of color called pigment. That's right. Pigment particles are suspended in the paint, and that's what makes it brown. Now, the pigment in our skin is called melanin. And melanin is made by special cells in our skin right below the outer layer, right below our epidermis. Now, melanin is what makes freckles, melanin is what makes suntans, and melanin is great fun at parties. Um, I'm kidding about the party thing. Melanin does two things. First of all, it allows our skin to absorb some sunlight, which helps us make vitamin D, which our bodies need. Also, melanin keeps us from getting too much sunlight, which is bad for our skin. So, people whose ancestors live far from the equator, where the sun doesn't shine too brightly, usually have lighter colored skin, which allows their skin to absorb some sunlight. People whose ancestors live near the equator, where the sun shines brightly, usually have darker colored skin so they don't get too much sunlight. So the rainbow of people that we have all over the world, well, it's all done with melanin. Isn't that cool? Thank you for considering the following.
get an itch? Yeah, I know the feeling. Apparently, it's our pain receptors. That's right. The nerves in our skin that make us feel pain, you know, ouch, also make us itch. Apparently, it's nature's way of getting us to remove some skin cells from our epidermis, from our outer layer of skin. Nobody's sure exactly why it happens, but it has to do maybe with an insect bite or some other chemicals in your skin that you don't want there. Uh, can you get right there, uh, oh, down, just a little, and oh, over, oh, yeah, oh, thanks. You're active, attractive, and you want to stay that way. You're going and showing that you know how to play. You keep your skin clean. Yeah, you take good care. Cause if they turn green, and give your friends a scare. For every sir and every miss, it's fresh epidermis. Every day, every way you can see, you've got to keep your skin sanitary. Our skin does three things. One, it protects us from the weather. Two, regulates our body temperature. Three, skin gives us our sense of touch. Skin is amazing. Welcome to another edition of Nerve Highway. When we last saw Victor, his skin was about to touch a very hot cup of cocoa. Oh boy, we better hurry up and get to Victor's brain now and let him know it's gonna be hot. Hurry, hurry, next exit, next exit. I know where we're going. If we don't get there in time, he's gonna get burned. I'm hurrying, I'm hurrying. I know it's around here somewhere. Step on it! I am, I am! Oh, here we are. I hope we're in time. <laughs> Tune in next week when Victor gets a paper cut. <laughs> Your skin is thickest on the soles of your feet. The skin in your ear makes earwax. Well, now you know! Here's an experiment to show you about how your skin senses things. All you need are two pencils. You want them to be sharp, but not too sharp. Okay, focus on your sense of touch for a minute. Now, hold your pencils close together so that the points are even. Now, touch them on different parts of your skin. Try the back of your hand, then the back of your neck. What do you notice when you touch the back of your neck? Notice, when you touch the back of your hand, you can feel two separate points. But when you touch the back of your neck, you can only feel one. Certain parts of your body, your skin, are more sensitive than others. Spread the pencil apart a little. Then you can start to feel them as two separate points. Your fingers and your lips are two of the most sensitive areas of skin on your body. Ever notice how babies often feel things with their mouths? That's because we have lots of touch receptors on our lips. The skin on our fingers and feet are very sensitive. Sensitive hands help us control our pencils. The sensitive skin on our feet helps us keep our balance even on one foot. Eh? Eh? <laughs> I'm Alina Hine, and I'm a fingerprint scientist. And just about everything that I do deals with the skin located on the palms of the hands. Did you know that no two people have the same fingerprints? Your, your fingerprints never change. They're permanent. We're going to begin with the outside of the thumb, and then we're going to roll towards. We want to go from nail to nail. Your skin on the outside of your hands is different than what from the inside. If you look real closely at the insides of your hands, they, you can see all of these patterns. And the reason why the, those are different from the outside of your skin is more like for grasping things. If my sk skin was smooth and slick like it was on the outside, my, this, this canister would slip out of my hand. Okay, shall we go into the lab? This is called a forensic light source, and what this does is it helps us see 
some types of evidence that we wouldn't normally see if we didn't have this to help us. Remember that we want to be careful not to touch those prints because they're real fragile and if we touch them they could smear those prints. How about if you take a brush too? You want to start like from one end and just like smooth your finger over it. Now Lisa, you got a card ready for me? Can you see those fingerprints on there now? Yeah. Looks like we have some future fingerprint scientists here. Sand is hot. My skin is telling me that the sand is hot. In fact, it's very hot. It's really hot. It's hot, hot, hot. Ha, ah, ah. ha. Cold. Skin is telling me it's cold. Hot sand. Whoa, whoa, whoa. The water's cold. It's hot. It's hot. Oh, it's cold. The sand is hot. The water's cold. Out, oh, no, the sand is hot. Now, exclusively on Skin Tone Records, the first volume of Golden Hits from Mr. Sensitivity himself. Johnny Flesh. Melanin underneath my epidermis. Sebaceous gland secreting sebum. Please just hold my hand. That's right. Let Johnny take you back to a time when touch regulated body temperature and skin protection, spelled R-O-M-A-N-C-E. Epidermis, epidermis, I am seeing That's right, folks. Order now for 40 of your favorite Johnny Flesh tunes in this exclusive television offer. Send check or money order to Johnny Flesh, Golden Hits, Volume 1, One Sensitive Organ Street. Feely Town, USA. Hey, come here. Want to try something really fun with your skin? Cool. And guess what? It won't leave any permanent marks. All you'll need are two medium-sized bowls, one large bowl, some ice, and hot and cold water. Fill one bowl with warm water, and the other with cold water. And just leave the big one empty. I'm going to add ice to make it extra cold. OK, let me see your hands. Put one in the cold water and one in the warm water. Now let your hands get used to the water for a few seconds. OK, now when I say go, you take your hands out. I'm going to dump the two together, and then you put them back in. Ready? Go. Now, your cold hand feels warm, and your warm hand feels cold, doesn't it? All right, now take the bowl and dump it over your head. Oh, come on, do it. Because your skin is so sensitive, you can tell if something is thin or thick, rough or smooth, just like that. Here's a piece of paper. It's about uh, 0.09 millimeters thick, but you can feel it easily. Now take a cereal box. It's a lot thicker. It's 0.49 millimeters. It's five times as thick. And you can tell just like that. Now, sandpaper. You can tell that this is rough. Or this, this is sandpaper too. But it's not quite as rough. You can tell just like that. Thick or thin, rough or smooth, just like that. that. The back of your hand is almost 9,000 nerve endings, 30 hairs, and four oil glands. It takes 200,000 frowns to produce one wrinkle. Now you know! Your hair grows out of your skin. That's right, all your hair grows out of your skin. Now here's another thing. Maybe you've gotten pimples or zits. Ooh, they're, they're gross. Here's what happens. Bacteria work their way down next to the hair and infect your sebaceous gland, where the oil for your skin is made. 
Now, here's what happens. Thousands, tens of thousands, an army of white blood cells shows up to fist it out with a bacteria. Eventually, the white blood cells win. Yay. But you're left with this fluid. Ooh, it's gross. The best thing to do, put on something like benzoyl peroxide. It'll help kill the bacteria and dry out your skin. Whatever you do, don't mess with it. You'll just be damaging your skin. <laughs> Tickle someone. You might just get a laugh. This message brought to you by the Laugh-A-Day Foundation. <laughs> Thanks for hanging out with me today. Now that you see how important your skin is, you can see why I'm wearing so much protection. See, it's okay if your epidermis is showing, you just gotta treat it right. Come on in, Bill, the water's great. Yeah, come on in, Bill. Produced in association with the National Science Foundation. Bill.